This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, so if you're looking to buy or sell cards, then definitely check out their site linked in the description. I'm a big fan of how they do business, so check them out and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and Worlds has just concluded. The Worlds live streams are done, and in the history books, the new world champion, Ryosuke, has been crowned, and honestly... Watching these live streams for the past two days, I watched the entirety of the world's live streams completely. And had I known that they were going to be handled the way that they were handled, I would not have watched any of them. At all. Period. It was very much a lacking experience from my perspective. And it really sort of set the, set the bar like really low for the rest of the Konami live streams that I plan on watching as the year develops and goes forward. Now, this is going to be a little bit of a ranty, complainy style video, so if you guys don't like that, then I'm sorry, but this is something that I've got to talk about and got to get off my chest in video form, or else I'm going to literally be bugged by it forever, because I believe that this live stream was one of the worst logistically run live streams that I have ever seen, period, from any official tournament committee, entity, company, anything. And this is comparing it to other Konami live streams, even the past ones from 2010, 2011, where the world's live stream was literally just one screen of the game being played and nothing else. And two people that you could almost never hardly understand because they were whispering into their mics and things like that, or they just spoke horrible broken English. This is comparing those streams to those streams, as well as the most recent Konami streams that have been going on in the North America and European event territories, which those, they leave a little to be desired, but they are mostly run very smoothly and very well, and they're very obviously catered towards people that are interested in the game and they want to basically involve you in the event. This, this World's Championship livestream, not any of that at all, which is such a shame, because it makes it so frustrating when you look at the live stream and it was one of the prettiest and most well laid out and designed live streams that I have ever seen ever period it was so gorgeous to watch it was so good to look at the graphics were for the most part great the way it was executed was the only thing that was the problem the logistics of it was very obviously just very like excluding to anyone in the TCG player bases because the only thing that really mattered to them, it seemed, was the OCG player bases that were going to be watching the live stream because it was being held in Japan. The only thing that was catering towards the TCG marketplace that they knew was going to be watching the stream were the English commentators. But regardless, I've got to add some structure to this video, so this is my three reasons why this world's live stream was one of the worst that I've ever watched, period. In all of the history of Konami's live streams, in my history of watching competitive tournament live streams ever, this one is logistically one of, if not the worst, that I've ever seen. But the first reason why this was just an awful live stream for me as a TCG player was that there were no subtitles and there were no English card files on hand provided for the English stream. They had two separate streams running. They had one that had a Japanese set of commentators speaking Japanese for the OCG territories that were watching, and then they had another stream where they had Jerome McHale, Michael Conaham, all of these people that speak English that were giving us English commentary to the English TCG market. And they didn't have any of the English or TCG card files on hand for when they were putting all these card graphics up on screen like they do during American and European YCSs, they go up in English. You can see the card. You can see the card name. You can see the card type, the text, all those things. You can potentially try to read the card if you are not familiar with it. For this live stream, all of those were in Japanese, and they didn't even have text boxes. It was literally just they put up a card with a picture that looks like Crystal Wing, or a picture that looks like True King's Return, or a picture that looks like Masterpiece, but everything, everything, the name, the text box that had the type only in it was in Japanese. It's very inaccessible for people who are trying to watch the stream that might not be super familiar with these cards. They're, you've got to cater your you've got to cater your stream to every single part of your audience that you might be watching. There might be someone who literally doesn't go to events that often, isn't that competitive of a player, but would watch a live stream every single time it comes on because they like watching people play Yu-Gi-Oh! And this is the World Championship. I do not play Call of Duty. 
I watched the Call of Duty World's Championships and all of the, like, the, the live streaming championships. I do not physically play Smash, but every time I can catch a live stream for a Smash tournament like EVO or anything like that, I watch it because the commentators are good, the graphics are good, it's easy for me to understand and I enjoy watching the game be played. I don't enjoy game, like, playing the game myself. You have to cater to that sort of audience. And this live stream for those files was not anywhere near catered to that. You were looking at a card, it's like, I know what that card is because of the picture. That's it. And so anyone that was looking at this and doesn't know the exact effect of these cards, doesn't know the exact name of the cards, doesn't know as in depth of a knowledge as someone who would be on the world stage, they were just being alienated. And you went to the trouble of getting English commentators for an entirely separate stream setup. They had multiple streaming setups going that were being monitored by separate people. That's how this has to work. But they didn't have the appropriate files for the TCG territories to be used. And that's really sort of an issue to me on a major level because it makes it to where it's very clearly alienating to people that are not very familiar with things that they might be watching. It's just a problem. It's a minor problem, but the bigger problem on this spectrum is the lack of subtitles that was given. Especially in the area of like the augmented reality duel that they had set up. That was very obviously a staged and scripted duel, much like our, you know, American and European character duels that happen at some large YCSs and many of our nationals. It was very obviously scripted. There was a script that a guy came out walking onto the stage literally reading from a book. So you knew the words this man was going to be saying. For a solid 25 minutes-ish of this stream, there was only Japanese being spoken, and as a person watching a TCG stream with English commentators, I don't care if I'm listening to people talking in Japanese. Just give me some closed caption style ass subtitles on the bottom of the screen, please and thank you. You know what the person's gonna say. He's reading from a book that has a script in it. Why did you not provide subtitles to anyone who doesn't understand what this man is saying? It's just... Uh, there was a solid point where there was literally 20 to 25 minutes of this going on where all you can hear is people talking in Japanese and playing a staged scripted duel that you knew they could have provided subtitles for in some way or capacity. And so it just makes it very clear that they did not care whoever was watching this that doesn't speak Japanese. It wasn't catered towards them, which is a huge, huge no-no in my book. If you're trying to be an accessible game, just trying to market yourself as like a company that has a game that's you know for the player base, and literally you have a separate dedicated stream for these people that don't speak Japanese but you did not provide anything else for them to try and understand things kinda gets me uh, kinda gets me a little upset if you if you get what I'm saying maybe I'm overreacting to this but it gets me really upset when I'm sitting there for literally 20 minutes and I don't understand a single word that is being said and there's no subtitles to help me understand and this is supposed to be the big special event of the of the tournament the, the scripted augmented reality duel is supposed to be the cool thing that I'm supposed to be waiting for uh, to like just bridge the gap between gameplay. God, got me actually upset. But second reason, the breaks in between rounds were absolutely ridiculous. This is a 24 man main event, a 12 person dragon duel event, and a 10 person duel links event. There are legitimately 40 players. There are 36, 46 players. There's 24, 12, and 10. That's 46 players that are playing in Worlds. And the matches were being reported on stream as they were being finished. The results of the matches were being reported to the commentators, and they were saying, this person beat this person, this person beat this person, this person beat this person. But then the match would end, and they would go to a just blank screen. Ooh, basically a blank screen. Just says Konami, Digital Entertainment, Esports, Worlds Championship. They're marketing themselves to Esports now? how, when, and where, and why, but that's not the point. Uh, the breaks, they'd always put a timer up that was like count down from 57 minutes to an hour, and it would count down to the next, like, to the next round. When in America, in the American events and the European events, they put other videos up to gauge, like, keep people interested, keep people watching. Like at the North American WCQ, I watched the same Code of the Duelist showcase uh, card thing, a good four or five times because it was on so I was sitting in the chair in front of the screen waiting for the next round to start of a uh, top cut so I was just gonna sit there and watch it and I would 
watch it with friends, point out things, find out new things that I missed the first time around because I was chatting with people, all that sort of stuff. It kept people interested. It kept people on the stream. Even if you've seen it before, you could watch it again and try and dissect more information out of it, especially in the area of the Code of the Duelist showcase that they were doing at Nationals, because those are new cards that people aren't familiar with. But, regardless, the breaks were insane. Absolutely insane. Day 2 was even more insane. They started the stream, they played two rounds, which was the top four match between Marcelo and the person from Singapore, and then the... Uh, the third, fourth playoff between Marcello Barbary and uh, Michael Forner, I think, All, but also the Italy person, the, Ital the Italian player. But then once that match was finished, they said, we're going on lunch break. And they went back to that blank screen that just says Konami World Championship Qualifier on it, and they had a thing there that said, this tournament will return at 2.30 p.m. And being someone who understood that Japan was 13 hours ahead of time on us, at the point that that screen was shown was at 11 a.m. Japanese time. So they went on a three and a half hour lunch break. And then it was literally just no, it was no content on the stream. It was nothing. At least they had the nerve to shut the stream down after a while once they realized people were just leaving and not coming back. And then they rebooted the stream before the, uh, before the, the finals uh, ended up being played, the finals for Duel Links. Dragon Duels and the actual main finals, but still, they took such a long break just to come back and have a 30 minute segment of all Japanese speech that was very, very obviously scripted that they could have put subtitles or closed captions for, circling back to that topic, but then they had the finals when they, they, had, they could have done this beforehand. There was literally nothing taking place between the third and fourth playoff and then. It was just a huge break, a huge break of time. To everyone else watching in the world that is up incredibly early in the morning or staying up incredibly late, that's horribly unfair. Horrendously unfair. But even that break, is that like three hour break, is not really that big of an issue. The biggest issue is that during day one, when they had those hour long breaks between every single round, they didn't put anything up to keep the people engaged with the stream, to keep people watching, to keep people like there. They could have done things. They could have done interactive things. They could have had people... I think at like a previous Worlds, they at like 2016 Worlds or something, I can't remember exactly which Worlds it was, but between the rounds, they'd have like field reporters going around and like talking to people and doing things, keeping people engaged. They did nothing of that at this Worlds. And that's really agitating. When it's been done before, it's been clearly done before, and it's been clearly something that worked and kept people engaged and was great. But instead, no, you just cut to a screen that says, Ha, this is the company. Timer. Come back then. It's very obvious that you don't really care if we're watching this or not. It's just not, it's not catering towards people the way you should be catering towards people if you want them to watch your shit. <sighs> ah, those breaks were insane. The only reason that I stayed and watched the, the, uh, the world stream as long as I did was, thank God, John Moore had the foresight to put up a Twitch stream that had the Twitch chat of his Twitch channel on so that we could talk to people and then later he opened up his Discord for voice chat between people that could have the capability of doing that and we were able to just cut up and just chat about the stream because Konami turns the chats off on YouTube and Twitch so you can't discuss anything there, you can't talk about the gameplay there. This is another problem but that one's been kind of beaten to death. That's, that's not something that we really need to talk about because that's very obviously a, a very bad move from the business standpoint of those streams, but I digress. That's not what we're here to talk about today, but the only reason I stayed and watched for as long as I did was because there were people I could talk to about the nonsense, and thank, thank you, John Moore, House of Champions, for hosting that sort of thing and capability, because otherwise, I, I would have gotten fed up with the stream way before I did, and I wouldn't have watched it to completion. Third and final point, Duel Links did not need to be included in the stream, it was very clearly just to promote the game, to try and get more people to play it, and it was awful every time they showed it. They showed two Duel Links features. Round two, they did a Duel Links feature, which took literally nine minutes. <laughs> it was a nine minute 2-0 in Duel Links format, and then the commentators had to sit there and talk for another 15 minutes about Duel Links the game because they weren't expecting it to go that fast. 
and then they had to sit there and talk about it for another 15 minutes and then cut to a timer that set, then said again, wait another hour before we come back for stuff to happen. Like, <laughs> the, that was the first Duel Links feature. And then the only other Duel Links feature that we got was the finals, which was also a 5 minute 2-0 essentially. One player literally did not play a single actual gameplay oriented card during two games and just got 2-0'd. He was playing tunes in the Duel Links format. And any of you that are familiar with Duel Links format, you know you need to have Toon Kingdom. There's four copies of it in the deck, I believe, in a 20 card deck. Didn't draw it at all during two games. Got 2 0'd. Literally, the only play he made was he used Sphere Karibos to prevent himself from dying, and he used Rising Energy to boost his opponent's monster when it was already a game because he was like, this is all I got. <laughs> Duel Links was literally terrible. If anything, the amount of interest I have in Duel Links after watching those two feature matches from Worlds is less than it was beforehand. I tried Duel Links, I thought it was pretty alright, but I didn't know what the meta looked like, so I was like, I'm not gonna grind Duel Links or spend money on it right now and not understand, like, where it's gonna be, uh, in the next, like, couple of months. Like, it was an enjoyable game, but it's not real Yu-Gi-Oh, so it didn't really hold my interest that much. Watching the Duel Links finals and the Duel Links feature, at Worlds, the amount of interest I have in the game has plummeted because it was literally a 10 minute 2 0 match twice. One person just wasn't allowed to play. <laughs> That's just how it was. And it, it was. Mm. The, the problem I have with it is that Duel Links is very obviously going to run very fast, but they took up main event and Dragon Duel event features to show us 10 minutes of Duel Links and then nothing else. That's what got my ass. That's what got me upset was the fact that we saw one main event feature and one match of real Yu-Gi-Oh in the world's event and then it was like Duel Links. Here you go boy. We're gonna promote our new game. Hope you buy it. Hope you play it. Hope you spend money on it. It's like, come on. I'm not here to watch Duel Links. I know there are people that probably are here to watch Duel Links, but I'm not here to watch Duel Links. Am I interested in it? Slightly. Only slightly. If you had an additional stream running that was just the entire Duel Links, uh, like, the entire Duel Links worlds, I would have queued that up and watched it next to the world stream. Because I would have been able to look on one screen and watch worlds. Other screen, look at what's going on in Duel Links. Because Duel Links is very fast, it's very easy to it's very easy to follow. There was so much downtime in between all of like the shuffling and things of the main event that you could easily just look over if you have multiple monitors, or you could put them side by side on one screen or whatever. You could easily flick over and watch like an entire game of Duel Links in the time it takes for one player to shuffle in the main event. And so like I would have watched an entire separate stream of Duel Links. Just because my interest in the game does exist. But the fact that you are taking away from what I want to see, which is either Dragon Duels or the main event of Worlds, to show me Duel Links, which I already had a very lowered interest in over the main event, and then you're going to take the time up just to literally let me watch somebody get like killed twice in 10 minutes, talk about the game, and make me look at the commentators for 15 minutes, and then send me back to a waiting screen so that I can watch the next match of real Yu-Gi-Oh! be played? No. No, no, no. That's not how you do things. That's not how you get people interested in your shit. You do it in a way that makes them feel like they're involved. You do it in a way that makes people feel like they're not being cheated. And every time Duel Links was shown on screen, on stream, I felt cheated. I felt like my time had been had. I literally remember the first day of Worlds, the first match ended and they were like, we'll be back in 20 minutes. So I was like, shit, I'm hungry. So I got, out, I got out of my house, got in my car, drove to my nearest Chick-fil-A, got food, rushed back home to get in just in time for the timer to be counting down to zero, sat down, started eating, it's Duel Links. I was like, okay. Oh, that's the thing, it wasn't even like announced that it was going to be Duel Links next. It just showed up and it was like Duel Links. It's like, we're giving you a Duel Links feature this round. I was like, oh, well, that's odd. Oh, well. I'm kind of interested in the in the in the game, so might as well, right? Sat down, ate. The Duel Links feature was finished before I was finished eating my food. I was like, I just literally rushed out and rushed home 
<laughs> in order for there to be literally nothing of any value for me to have lost, and now they're telling me to wait for another hour to watch Dragon Duels for round three. Like, ah, uh, Duel Links was terrible. I feel like it would have done so much better, and I would have watched it. I seriously would have watched it had it been its own self-included, self-involved stream, because you could just, you could go to it, and you could be like, all right, well, there's nothing happening in the main event right now. Let's watch Duel Links. Let's watch some Buster get savaged by Red Eyes or by Toons or whatever. Let's watch all the Sphere Karibos get dropped. All that sort of stuff. <sighs> this video has been really, really ranty. This video has been very, very complainy. And I understand that we are not entitled to streams. But if you're going to make it shitty and make it very obvious that you don't care if people are watching it from certain territories, then don't go out of your way to make an entire second stream for those people. Don't! Like, I will mute a Japanese stream. If, if, the, if there was only one stream and it was all in Japanese, I'd mute it. I would mute it and start talking with other people, get on Skype with a few of my friends that are watching Worlds, get on Discord in the Zodiac Duelist thing that John Moore was hosting. Like, there's so many different things that I could have done other than sit there and have these things that are very clearly meant for the TCG player base, but then half of it just isn't. As whatever. I know we are entitled to streams. I know that like it's just it's a bonus, but still do it right. If it's worth doing, it's worth doing properly and worth doing to the best of your ability. Especially when it's so clear how much money and time and effort you sunk into the preparation of this. But anyway, that's just me being a complainer. If you guys enjoy it, whatever. If you don't, sorry. But like seriously, this world's stream was one of the worst events that I've watched that was streamed period in terms of the logistics of its execution and how it was handled a three and a half hour lunch break come back later guys we know it's like 3 a.m where you are right now and you stayed up to watch this shit as late as you could but you could stay up till 6 a.m i bet you could stay up till 2 in the morning when we come back what i you had nothing going on in between that time other than people going out and getting lunch when you could have rotated people going to get lunch there was no reason for anybody to have to take a three and a half hour lunch break zero <laughs> there were only like four players eight players total there was there was main finals there were six players there was Duel Links finals main finals and dragon duel finals that had to be played there were six players that had to stay in the venue to play games all those other players they can go get food you can rotate out staff members, have them go get food. Hell, you could bring catering food in. There's so many ways you can handle that other than saying, we will be back in three and a half hours. <laughs> God damn. But anyway, that's just been my opinion on the matter. This video is long. This video is ranty. Oops. Sorry about that. But if you made it this far, give me a hashtag worlds in the comments down below to let me know you watched this far. Other than that, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe to all nonsense you usually do. Links, as always, are in the description of my Facebook and Patreon pages if you want to support the channel directly. Then Patreon is the best way to do so. Special thanks to Travis Miller, Iradium, Jay Garcia, Yuki Phoenix, and Troy Perkins, as well as everybody else that currently supports me on Patreon this month for all the fantastic support you've given me. You help make my ability to make content a bit better, give more time involved in it, all that sort of stuff and nonsense that basically is all just put on the Patreon page. Also, if you want to support me on Patreon, I'm doing monthly giveaways for at least 10 packs of the newest set. I haven't decided how many more than 10 I'm going to do or if I'm going to do 10, but I'll keep you updated with that as it gets closer to the time that I'm going to be doing the giveaway, which is at the very beginning of September. and It'll be open to anybody that has supported me on Patreon. So if you want to enter a little giveaway for that and also support a channel that you like, then definitely go for it. But other than that, as I've already said, thanks so much for watching. Thanks for your time as usual, guys, and take care. I will see you in the next video where I will be complaining significantly less about things that Konami has done. I promise.